Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are restarting exactly where we left the last time. It's France versus the Axis. We are going to fight World War II entirely alone. Because our goal is to create the European Union and for that we need as much war score as possible. Now, our strategy is going to involve defeating Italy as fast as possible and then focusing on Germany. We are going to defeat Germany with a naval invasion on the northern part of Germany and then we are going to try to cut off all of the divisions they assigned to this front. Now, of course, you should check the previous guide if you haven't yet. I will include the link up here and in the description of the video. I will briefly go through the positioning of our armies nonetheless. So let's start with the first offensive army. It is assigned to what used to be Belgium. We are also going to start assigning them an offensive line so they can get some planning bonus for later. But we're not going to attack for now. Our secondary offensive army is ready to push into Italy. We're going to do that very soon. In fact, since Italy at the moment doesn't have any divisions, this is not always the case, but it seems to be the case now, I'm going to change this from an offensive line, line to a spearhead with the goal of getting to Venezia. Uh, this is our first defensive army, we are just going to keep them here, they are going to defend Maginot. Attention. Our trucks, although we are not going to use them much, since we didn't build forts up to 6, but only up to 4, we are going to assign some of them here just in case. Uh, want to reinforce a little bit uh, this line. In our defensive theater, the first army is assigned to Corsica. The second army is the Alpini. They are ready to push into Italy. The third army is uh, tanks. Uh, they are useless, uh, but we can assign them to this front uh, to further reinforce it. Uh, and our horses are protecting Africa, of course. Uh, as for our last offensive army, it is already assigned to this front, uh, which will become very hot very soon. Let's make sure that we have all of our planes assigned as well. It wasn't all of them. Let's make sure we have all of them assigned. Probably not even to the Alpine region. I think we may need them more in, uh, in the Italian region for our naval invasion. Since they don't have divisions in here. Everything seems to be ready so we can start uh, this war. And we are going to do it uh, by declaring war to Slovakia. We are ready, uh, we need to see and we need to wait until Italy actually joins this war because they are not automatically into it. And as we started the war against Germany we can also pick a war economy, we are going to do it. Okay, Italy joined, that's very nice. Let's see if we can get uh, the naval superiority right away, looks like that's the case. And if that's the case uh, there is no reason not to start our naval invasion right away. Now, this is very very important, uh, this front uh, seems fine most of the time sometimes the german managed to push one of the forts and you need to manually control it you need to manually move some of the divisions so that they do not push any of these forts if they manage to push even just one of the forts we are in big trouble so we don't want that to happen so we need to constantly keep an eye up here it's annoying but that's the only way okay we got uh, Livorno very easily this naval invasion was uh, very fast and very successful now the next goal is to cut off uh, Italy in two parts uh, we want the southern part and the northern part to be completely divided okay let's uh, briefly reassign these divisions uh, because we actually want uh, the northern army to push uh, exactly where I told them to but we want the southern army to only push in the south Okay, while they push, uh, it's better to keep an eye up here. Uh, also, another thing that I always forget uh, is uh, we should uh, remove uh, our naval invasion support. Uh, we don't need it anymore. On the other hand, we need uh, fuel for our planes. The, when this is under control, so when you manage the front, this is very convenient because the Germans are just crashing into our forts, uh, losing a lot of divisions. We already caused them 200,000 casualties while they caused us like 12,000. So. And it's very good for the war score, of course. We need to build up the war score because we join the war a bit later. So this is very convenient for us. Here we get another minus 5% stability and that's why we went for improve uh, uh, war conditions. And at this point we can also use uh, uh, domestic film industry, increase the war support by 10%. Uh, this is also going to increase our stability a little bit. Uh, it's pretty beneficial at this point. Now the Germans eventually will send help down to Italy. And that's why we want to stop them here. This is a pretty fair and easy front to defend for us. It's not the easiest to attack for the Germans. So we want to be more or less in this area. Getting to Trieste may be useful to capitulate Italy, but then it's a bit more difficult to defend. Oh, by the way, we are out of fuel completely because I forgot something very important that you should do at the beginning of the war. 
So uh, if you uh, see the video, maybe do it a bit earlier than me. But you should dedicate 10 civilian factories uh, to buying oil uh, from the United States. Uh, let's keep an eye up here because I see something yellow. You see, this is what you don't want to see in here. Don't want to risk anything there. So as soon as you see a number that may be tricky, send reinforcements. Don't risk it. Nice. Okay, now, now we can crush them. Nice. We destroyed uh, the Italian army pretty significantly here. Okay, Benito Mussolini is deposed, uh, which means there will probably be a civil war in Italy soon. Uh, I suggest making a save at this point, uh, because you want to give your territories to Italy. It's because they will be your puppets, uh, and by giving them the territories, you automatically get them in the peace conference. Uh, so that's free land. You want that, but there is a bug, uh, which sometimes doesn't make that event appear, and sometimes it's impossible for some reason to give... Uh, land uh, to your Italian puppet. So it's uh, just saving so you can reload uh, in case uh, anything goes wrong. Now, I don't think Italy will give up uh, until we get to Reggio Calabria, which is sometimes a little tricky. Let's see if this time we can get it easily or not. Okay, nice. We can get the second doctrine here. Then of course you just continue, but after this one I suggest going for smoke and fire. But that one is very important, so prioritize it. Now if we get Reggio Calabria, Italy should probably go into a revolution yeah okay that's very nice so this is what we wanted and as you can see now this uh, Regno del Sud Kingdom of the South is our puppet now the main thing is we want them to take all of the land we have which usually happens through an event let's see if we get the event okay this is the event we want sometimes the game the game is bugged and you don't get this event you really want this event because you want to transfer them the territory you want to give them everything Okay, the main army that we freed, however, is this one. Now, with this army, we want to prepare a naval invasion of Germany. So, we're going to start sending them up here. At this point, we also want to start building military factories in Italy. And that's to decrease uh, their autonomy. So, we can start building military factories uh, everywhere in Italy. We're going to finish ours first, uh, but then after that, we can build more in their land. Okay, looks like the United Kingdom got Sardinia. That's a bit annoying. It would have been better to get it ourselves, uh, but that's fine at the same time because the main thing it does is it frees our divisions here, our defensive divisions, uh, and we can start sending them up to the area of Venice, uh, which means we also free our offensive army in here. We are going to need this army soon, so we can select it and we can start assigning it uh, to the border with Germany. Now this is a very difficult push, but a very important one. We want to use a spearhead uh, to try to get to Dortmund. The idea is with our naval invasion we'll arrive up here and we want to cut off uh, the Germans. Uh, we want to split them into two sides and then we want to completely destroy everything which is uh, in the Netherlands and Belgium. And we can start sending our planes up here, assign them to this region. So finally we'll get some air superiority in here or at least we'll fight the Germans for it. Of course, in addition to some nice uh, war score from uh, enemy planes destroyed. Now, we got the improved anti-tank, uh, which is not particularly relevant, uh, but what it is important for is uh, our new cast design. This is the design we are going to use, uh, so we can save it, uh, we can remove the old one, and we can start producing the new one. We also want to add uh, 15 military factories uh, to it and we are going to take them away from our fighters. Now the Germans are pushing a lot uh, and this is the moment uh, in the game in which we want to pay the most attention because we really don't want to lose uh, anything in here. Yeah, Italy is not doing much with their division so maybe what we could do is we could request uh, their forces uh, and we can manage them ourselves. Uh, this is actually a good idea. Now, the only thing we want to use their divisions for is defending this front. We don't care about anything else. The Germans are impressive, I must say, despite the fact that we have absolutely the air superiority, we have a lot of divisions, we have the forts, uh, and they still almost push. But at what cost, I would say, because they lost 700,000 men in here. That's, that's a lot. Okay, let's start planning our naval invasion of Germany now. We are going to do it from uh, Dunkirk. And we're going to do it in this area of Germany. Also, one thing which is very important, but I forgot, is to assign our spy to Germany. If you remember, do it a bit faster. So another three divisions here, another three divisions here, and the last one here. 
to make sure that our fleet is also ready. Yeah, it's already there, so that's perfect. Let's renew uh, the agreement with Switzerland, of course. And again, we need to reinforce here. Okay, everything is fine on this uh, front. Although our divisions here are struggling a bit with supplies. So if we, if we have enough uh, trucks, and I believe we do, we can increase uh, the motorization priority possibly for our secondary army too. It's going to be much better for them. Okay, our naval invasion is ready. Now the problem is getting the naval superiority in here. That's not always the easiest thing to do. Now, first of all, the best thing is probably to split the navy. And you can do it by pressing here, making it a balanced uh, fleet. And then let's give it a look. Ooh, it looks like we can get the naval superiority right away. Now, when this is not the case, you can just leave them on naval superiority for a bit. Uh, or you can assign them to patrol in this area. And you can send your planes uh, to get the air superiority as well. And eventually you get uh, the naval superiority in here. It's not too difficult. We can start the naval invasion. Now this is an important moment. So I would suggest uh, saving the game. This naval invasion will determine a big part, a big chunk of this war. And let's go. Now we may want to temporarily assign our planes uh, to this area of Germany. Because we want this naval invasion to succeed at all costs. As soon as we disembark, uh, we immediately attack uh, the harbor. We want to get the harbor as fast as possible. And we want to encircle them if possible, so they cannot send reinforcements to that harbor. Yeah, I like the way this is going. I don't know where that guy appeared from, but it looks like we got it. We got it. Very nice. Very important. Uh, now we can reassign this army here. And we can start planning an offensive, uh, which will be something of this kind. The main purpose is actually to get to the area of Dortmund. As soon as we get our divisions in here, we are going to start the offensive. Now, at this point, uh, we have enough political power and it may be time to switch from army defense to army offense. Because from now on, we are going to be mostly on the offensive. We are going to use a staff office plan uh, because we want them to attack as soon as possible. Okay, let's stop uh, our naval support uh, for the invasion right now. But at the same time, we're going to start this offensive. We need uh, the fighters to protect all areas, uh, but this is the main one for now. Because we're going to start the northern offensive first. Let's see how it goes. It's looking alright for now. This is going to be an extremely painful offensive. Uh, but at this point, uh, we want to assign all of the traits we can assign. Let's give him an uh, organization first. Let's give him uh, infantry expert and uh, suppressive barrage. We actually want to start attacking in all directions, especially down here. So we're going to reassign our planes. We're going to keep a few fighters up there. We're going to keep a few fighters on this area. And then we're going to start all of our offensives at once. Now this is going to be very painful, but trust me, it will work in the end. So we're going to start an attack with them and we're going to start an offensive with them. We need the Germans to be under pressure everywhere, because that's how you break them. We'll see our manpower going down very quickly now, but if needed, we're going to take extensive conscription next. Now, this is a difficult push. We are struggling a lot in the south. Don't worry, this is normal. The idea is that we keep uh, these units busy, so our invasion divisions can actually push up here. We got Nordmund, that's nice. Uh, the only issue is that from the south, we are not advancing at all at the moment. Now it would be really the time to push, because if we can get this encirclement, uh, things are going to be much easier for us. Very tough, they have a lot of divisions in here. Now at this point, we don't need the trucks here anymore. We can send them up here, try to protect this front with the trucks. Our manpower is now dangerously low. This often happens when you start the offensive in the south, so we're going to switch from li limited conscription to extensive conscription. And we are not going to have to worry about manpower anymore. Keep in mind that casualties are good for the war score, so we don't mind heavy casualties. We're going to form the European Union, so we are not going to have many issues with manpower anymore after that. And this is very nice. One less front to worry about. Now our trucks are going to definitely be enough up there. We are so close, but this last style is very difficult to get. They have so many divisions in here. And somehow they managed to get supplies as well. But don't worry, time is on our side. We are getting more fighters and more closer support as time passes. So yeah, this uh, this thing, this encirclement is what takes the longest. 
Of course, it would be better with an armored fist, but we cannot afford it with friends. So we need to do it with infantry. It will take some time, but with patience, we can get this done. Now, when we get the rocket artillery, I like to add it to my divisions, and we want to get it fast. So we're going to increase the production of rocket artillery to 25, and we're also going to assign like 10 to anti-tank. We're going to take them from our fighters. We're going to change our divisions to include them as soon as possible. We don't have enough uh, army experience now. What I'm thinking is, uh, I think we can send uh, one of these armies, uh, one of these defensive armies uh, up here to ease uh, the pressure uh, of them a little bit. Uh, that may actually be beneficial, so we can push down a bit more. Okay, now that our defensive army is up here, we can uh, reassign this army a little bit uh, and focus on the front that we actually care about, uh, which is the southern front. Uh, now, since we are building in Italy slowly, uh, the autonomy will decrease. Uh, you can uh, decrease it to integrated puppet uh, as soon as possible. I think it's time to start putting some pressure on the Germans again. Uh, we have some planning bonus at least here. So I will start again all of the offensives uh, and I will also use uh, the fleet uh, this time. Uh, see if it helps uh, on the on the cost at least. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I see some green numbers. Uh, that's pretty good. I also see some very bad red numbers in here. And now they are starting to struggle for supplies. Uh, that's very important. I think we are finally breaking them. Yeah boys. It's, it's getting closer. And now they are in big trouble because this is a huge encirclement that we got right here. Now, when you get enough political power, you can get uh, either tactical bombing. It's very good. Air superiority. Depending on the phase of the war. I think right now we have the air superiority, so I will get tactical bombing. Now we better focus all of our planes in here and just destroy them. Now, this is satisfying to see because this was a very, very tough fight. It took a while to get this encirclement. I must say Germany was particularly strong in this run. Uh, timing wise we are good because we started the war a bit earlier than usual. But this encirclement is usually a little bit easier to get. Anyway, just be patient. Uh, remember that time is on your side. Uh, if you don't get it right away, you will get it a little bit later. But you will get it and look at the amount of divisions they are losing in here. This is insane. The casualties are already up to 3 million. Yeah, we got good casualties too. Not denying that. But... This is massive. After this, we are going to have to rearrange our armies a little bit, but that's done. And 3.4 million casualties for the Germans. Now, this starts the next phase of the war. This is much easier than what we have done so far. Now, of course, we don't need the Navy anymore, so we can send them back. This doesn't matter anymore. But we need to rearrange our armies a little bit. The first army in the south uh, will have the goal of conquering Frankfurt, Stuttgart and Munich. The second army will assign it right here in the middle with the goal of going towards Vienna. And our third army will be up here with the goal of taking Berlin and then continue along the same front. Now, uh, in terms of planes, at this point, it's a bit annoying to manage them constantly and micromanage them constantly. So I'm just going to assign most of them to our middle army. Then I'm going to take like half of them, give them to the first army, another half uh, to the last army and something like this should be fine. Now, let's wait for them to get in position and then we're going to start, finally start uh, our decisive push against Germany. I believe we're ready. I'm not going to wait uh, for the planning bonus. Uh, so I just want to keep the pressure up as much as possible. This push will be much easier than the previous one. As you can see now, the Germans are suffering massively from our push. Berlin is down. After the main encirclement here, they no longer have the divisions to fight us. So the war is very tough at first, uh, but once you get that done, uh, it's a piece of cake. Now, to end the war, you need to get both uh, Stuttgart, Munich and Vienna. We are getting closer to the first of our goals in here. Struggling a bit more for Stuttgart, but, ooh, but we got a very nice encirclement here. So more Germans uh, divisions being destroyed. Yeah, we're actually pushing a bit more than uh, we want to, so I'm going to reassign this army. We don't want them to push up here. I do want uh, the uh, defensive army to protect this front and not let them take anything back. 
But what we need to push really uh, here is actually the southern part, so let's go there. Especially Vienna. They have a lot of divisions encircled in here. Sadly, they have forts, so despite being encircled, it's still difficult to kill them. This is a massacre. Now, at this point, it seems obvious that we are going to win the war. So start getting political power because we'll need it to annex Italy after the war. It looks like we're already pushing for Vienna. And at this point, I think we can start rushing a little bit for the last remaining victory points. Munich and Vienna. We got Vienna. As soon as we get Munich, the war should end. Let's uh, give it a look, but yeah, I think Munich will end the war. I will actually save the game and uh, let's give a last look uh, to the stats. Uh, we destroyed the German Reich, we caused them uh, 3.7 million casualties. Uh, we are close to 1 million ourselves, not bad at all. But the main point is uh, we got 75% of the total war participation. This is extremely high and it will guarantee that we get everything we need uh, at the end of the war in the Peace Conference. Now let's get to this peace conference then. Oh, they're actually defending Munich a bit more, but not anymore. The war is officially over and look at this, actually we finished with 80% of the war score. So we have enough points for everything we need. I will briefly show you what we need. I will also show you why we didn't uh, annex or we didn't keep the territories in the uh, Regno del Sud, in the Kingdom of Italy. And that is because this is now our puppet. We don't need uh, to claim this territory in the Peace Conference. And by doing that, we can save some extra points. About the Peace Conference, I will just go through the most important points. Prioritize taking the parts of Italy, including these ones, uh, that are not yours yet. Because the UK tends to keep them or to want them. You may need to fight the UK for them. Then I will show you what you need to reform the European Union. Okay, now what I got now is what you need for the European Union. So basically you need all of Germany except for Austria, Tyrol and this other place. And what used to be Czechoslovakia, where you can see Bohemia and so on. So this is what you need to annex to create the European Union. Everything else I suggest puppeting. But then I would also prioritize some of the very resource rich regions like this one in Hungary like this one in Romania, so try to get uh, as much value as possible out of the resources. There are also a couple of ones for the Netherlands. Yeah, the UK wants this one, but I want it too. You should also probably take the navies, uh, especially the Italian one can be pretty good. So if you have extra points, uh, use them for the navy. Other than that, uh, resource rights, war reparations, and you're good to go. And this is what we got. Uh, you can see the map uh, being mostly in blue, the color of France, indeed. Now, we want to annex Italy, and for that uh, we are going to need just a little bit more political power. Do not worry about the points, uh, because we are going to fix them uh, by sending them convoys. This is my amazing strategy to quickly annex puppets. We're just going to send them all of our convoys, uh, and we're going to get them back uh, right after we annex them. And of course, uh, the message we just got uh, means we can annex uh, Italy. Let's do it. Uh, and with Italy annexed, uh, we can finally realize uh, European unity. This is our decision. It is only June 1941, so this was actually pretty amazing. We were quite fast uh, at finishing this war. Let's realize our European unity. And there we go. Here is the European Union. We recreated it with France by fighting World War II alone. Now, of course, we struggle a bit in terms of manpower, but manpower and factories are not going to be an issue anymore. Let's actually check how quickly they change. 200, 1 million. And that's already 2 million, 400. So basically, we double them right away. Okay, guys, this should be the end of this guide. Uh, of course, uh, the European Union is extremely strong. As a democracy, I believe it's a bit harder to continue expanding. But of course, there are still challenges left in the game. You could be fighting the uh, UK, you could be fighting the Soviet Union. I don't think I will be continuing this run, however, unless uh, you're all very interested in it. So guys, thank you for watching this video. As usual, for countries guides, uh, a lot of work goes into these uh, many test runs, several hours spent uh, checking all of the details. Uh, and as you can see, of course, there is a little bit of RNG. Uh, the invasions can go a bit better. They can be a bit more tough. Uh, today, we struggle a bit uh, to get the encirclement. I usually get that uh, a little bit faster. But yeah, a lot of work went into this. Uh, so I would really appreciate it if you could, uh, you know, leave a like, uh, uh, leave a comment. Uh, and subscribe to the channel that really helps uh, uh, with the growth of the channel so that's why i'm uh, i'm asking 
Well, guys, I hope you can follow the guide uh, up to this point. If you have any troubles, any issues, of course, feel free to let me know in the comments, as well as if you have any suggestions on how to further improve uh, this guide. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.